Section 5.7, Binomial Theorem. We're going to expand using Pascal's Triangle and use the Binomial Theorem. Here is Pascal's Triangle. You don't have to copy this down, you just have to know how to use it. I have one up here that I'm going to give you here in a few minutes. So Pascal's Triangle starts with a 1. You put two ones directly um, to the right and left of it, but below it. So you start out with a triangle of ones. Then to get the next number, so if you had to reconstruct this, what you would do is start out with the three ones. Um, it, the number in the middle is the numbers that are directly above it. So one plus one is two, one plus two is three, two plus one is three, and so on. What do you see on the far left and the far right? All ones. All ones. So the far left is always a 1, the far right is always a 1. The numbers in the middle, you're going to use the two numbers that are directly above it. So if I look at this one, 35 is because it's 15 plus 20 is 35. 6 plus 15 is 21. 21 plus 35 is 56. So you could reconstruct the triangle if you had to. I don't know that I'll go that far. But it also shows in the book how they're getting the numbers that are in this little um, trapezoid. Um, right here, um, 1 plus 4 is 5, 4 plus 6 is 10. So they're showing the two rows because you have to look at the both rows to get the one underneath. Okay, so notice the row on the left side. It starts with row 0. Normally we would think it would be row 1. This is row 0, and that's when the variable has 0 for an exponent, so you get a 1. So anything to the 0 is a 1. Um, that's why it's 1 right there. So you always have to remember that the first row is 0, and then it increases by 1 each time. So how do we use this thing? We are going to um, expand using Pascal's triangle first. So here's what it looks like. Okay, so let's do this. While you guys are getting that copied, I will pause for a second and hand out that. So we need to look at how do we expand a plus b to the 6. We could write down a plus b, a plus b, a plus b six times, right? We all know how long it takes to multiply things two at a time, right? <laughs> and how easy it is to make a mistake. So we don't want to do that anymore. Um, what we want to do is we want to use some techniques so that we don't have to do that. We can get the numbers right away and it doesn't take near as long. So first thing you have to realize is your, um, your A is going to be right here and it's not always going to be an A. It might be a 2x or an 8x or a 12x or whatever. So um, for the first one we are going to use um, that. So your first term is here, your second term is there. Okay, so in this one A is just A and B is just B, but in the next one your A might be a 2x and your B might be an 8. Okay, so how do we apply it to other things and how do we do it when it's simple like this? Um, the first thing you have to realize is um, we're going to look for which row of that Pascal's triangle we need. So remember the first row is 0, so if you're looking at this one, first row is 0, the next row is going to be 1, the next row is going to be 2, Three, four, five, six. So what row are you actually looking at? What are the first three numbers? One, then what? Five. One, six, fifteen. Okay, so that's the row we're looking at because the first one's zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're looking at the exponent only. Okay, so whatever that exponent is, you go one more than whatever you're going to count because the first one is zero. Now, if you're looking in your book, um, right now they have those on the side and then you would know that it's you know directly across from it But you guys have to know how to use this. So the numbers we're looking at are 1 6 15 20 And then back down 15 6 and 1 So first thing you got to do is find the right row in Pascal's triangle Second thing you need to know is that um, the first variable we look at is the a part. Those values decrease by 1 every time, and then the other values increase by 1 every time. Okay, so um, here's what I'm talking about. My first number is going to have a 1 with it, my first term, and the a is going to have a 6. 
Okay, so the highest the A can be is a 6 because of that 6 right here. We're going to go down by 1 every single term. Okay, does that make sense? So I'm going to leave some spaces and I'm going to fill some other things in. So you might want to just watch and then, you know, write it down after you know kind of what I'm doing. Um, so the next term is going to be a 6 just because of that number right there. So we're on the second one. If A decreases every time, what's it going to be this time? 5. Then I'm going to leave a little space. The next term starts with the 15. The A gets smaller again by 1. So I'm just grabbing every single number going across and then decreasing my A each time. So what's the next one going to be? 20 and then A to the 3. And then 15 A to the 2 then 6a to the 1, and then 1a to the 0. But what's a to the 0? It's, it's just a number, so I'm not going to write a to the 0. I'm just going to leave it, a 1. Now, what we're going to do is we're, I'm going to do this in a different color just to see that I'm doing this kind of in a different step. Um, if a decreases every time, the B is going to increase every time, starting with 0. So the B this time, which is my second variable, is going to be B to the 0, B to the 1, B to the 2, B to the 3, B to the 4, B to the 5, B to the 6. Now, if you forget that you are starting with 0, you will end up with B to the 7. Is that possible with 6? No, so that's why you want to make sure that the highest number that you're using at any point is a 6. Now, does the b to the 0 on the first one really count? No, because no, anything to 0 is 1. So it looks like I'm forgetting about those two, but I'm really not. We don't want to write those if the exponent is 0. And this is my answer. Okay, so this is the fully expanded version. If we laid this out and multiplied a plus b, two times, then, you know, the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one, we would get this at the end. And we do not want to do that. Okay, so Pascal's triangle helps us with the beginning numbers, the constant part, and then the variables <coughs> increase every one and decrease every one, depending on, you know, where you're starting. So this is the answer. They take up a lot of space, but there's not a lot that you do. Now, anybody have questions about where the numbers came from? So what if the highest number was a 10? For the first, for the first variable, you'd go 10, 9, 8, 7, all the way down to 0. For the second variable, you would start at 0 and go all the way up to 10. And then you would also use the 11th row of Pascal's triangle because the beginning row is 0. Okay, what do you think about that? Does that seem hard? No. Okay, so let's do one that is a little bit harder. What happens if we don't have A's and B's in there? Then what does it look like? Now, this one, um, there's a binomial theorem. Um, generally, when they put them in theorem words, it's harder to understand than by just doing one. Um, so this one is to the nth power. Um, all they're doing is what we just did. Okay, it's just saying that it's doing it in two different ways. This one says you're taking the number from Pascal's triangle, um, which we still have to do anyway. Um, the exponent on the first term is going to be your highest number. Then it's going to decrease by one every time. But isn't that what we just did? It is. So it's really acting like there's two different ways to do this, but really we're doing the same thing. Okay, so let's just do it using something that's a little more complicated. So with this one, my a is going to be a 3x. My b is going to be a negative 2. Take the sign of whatever number is in there. If it was a plus 2, then we'd say b is 2. So signs are important here. Now, we're going to the fifth power. So what row do we look at in Pascal's triangle? The sixth one, because it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The number of the rows I'm looking at are 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Okay, so I'm going to write that down.
and you'll notice every time that the numbers are duplicated like it'll be one four six four one one five ten ten five one they'll they'll kind of repeat about halfway through um, I always write the numbers down because usually I don't have it necessarily sitting next to me um, but you can just look at the row if you want to as well it doesn't matter I mean that part you know you wouldn't be docked because it's not written somewhere I'm just kind of explaining where these numbers are coming from so we're gonna do the numbers first um, we're gonna have a 1 in front of the first one then we're gonna have a 5 then we're gonna have a 10 and I'm leaving quite a bit of space because we have more to write in this one. Okay, so I took Pascal's triangle, I looked for my row, I wrote those numbers down. Then I'm gonna go to my A, which is my three X. Okay, so we're gonna go three X to the what power? Fifth, the, whatever the highest exponent is, that's going to be where it is. So I'm going to put a 5. Then I'm going to put a 3x to the 4, 3x to the 3, and I'm going to keep going down by 1 each time. And you can put a 1, I'm just going to leave it. And then this one would be 3x to the 0. I'm going to leave that one in there for now when we simplify these, which we still have to do. Um, that's probably the hardest part about the whole thing, um, is we can take it out then. Um, then I'm going to do my B, which I'll go blue, is going to be blue. Um, so my B is negative 2. Do I start with a high number or a low number here? Mm -hmm. Zero. And then we increase by 1 every time. So if you end at 5, you did it right because you started at 0. So basically we're doing like three different things to get one term. And now it's all simplifying. So now you want to grab your calculators. Everybody okay with where the numbers are coming from? Even the 3x and the negative 2, if you assign them to be like just a simple thing, I think it'll be easier. So what we're looking at to get our number for the first one, we're going to take 1, which of course isn't going to change it, but you have to take 3 to the 5. And then remember, this one doesn't really count because it's really times 1. So what is 3 to the 5? 243. Yeah. Okay, so it's 243. And then my x would also have a 5, wouldn't it? 243 x to the 5. I'm not including this 2 to the 0, negative 2 to the 0, because that part is 1. Okay, so if you want to cross that out and say, yep, that's 1, uh, you can do that. Um, I will go like this um, for both of those, because that's all it is, is just a 1. So now we're going to do the next one. This one's a little more complicated. We have to take 5 times 3 to the 4th times negative 2. So all of the number parts, you got to multiply. And to the exponent as well. So 5 times 3 to the 4 times negative 2. And that's kind of a bigger number, and you're going to see big numbers here. Um, did you say 810? Yep, so it's minus 810 x to the 4. Don't forget about your variables. Um, basically, if you have a negative here, it will work its way in when you're doing your multiplying. So sometimes it might be alternating signs, sometimes it won't if they're all positive. Okay, the next one we're going to take 10 times 3 cubed, which is 27, that's 270, and then 270 times 4, because negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Okay, so 270 times 4, I get 1,080. Is that what you guys get? And then what's my exponent? to the 3. And you guys are going to keep going. So if you kind of get what we're doing, um, go ahead and try the next term. So this one will be 10 times 9 times negative 8.
Did you get negative 720? Mm -hmm. And then my x will be to the 2. And we keep going. 5 times 3 times 16. And then 1 times 1 times negative 2 to the 5. That would be negative 32. Now, when you write these, we always want them in descending order. So what I'm saying is, what if you did this in reverse? Would it matter? You'd still get the same thing, but everything would be flipped over. You then would have to reorganize them so that the highest exponent is first. Okay, so let's say you ended up with your negative 32 first and then your 240x. You're doing ascending order. We need descending order because really the terms are all the same. It's just that you maybe started here where you went the first one going up and the second one going down, which it doesn't matter. It's just you have to have it in descending order or basically standard form at the end. Now, on something complicated like this, I do want you to put this in there because if you made a mistake, I can see where and I can give you partial credit. If you did something here and you just give me the answer, I have no idea. Okay, so I'm going to put um, descending order just to make sure. Um, it should be if you've done it right. But if you happen to get ascending order, you just did the variables backwards. And that's not a super big deal, but you just have to rearrange them at the end. Okay, questions, anybody? Is that like the easiest thing you've done for a while? I hope so. I was hoping that. Um, let's try one. Do you want to do the something to the eight like we already did, or do you want to do one of the harder ones and be done? Okay, so let's do this one. Um, you can just do it in your notes, yeah. Okay, now it's not as long because it's only a four, so that's a bonus as well. I wouldn't ever give you one like that's to the 15th power. I would stick to something that's on this little sheet that you have, more than likely. Um, if you had to do another row, you could because you know that it forms a triangle um, and you add the two numbers kind of above it. So go ahead and do this one. <coughs> And then when it looks like you guys are kind of moving in the right direction, I'll put my answer up here and you can kind of see if yours matches. Okay, so I did not do mine in color this time. When I did mine, I did them all together. I want to show you one thing before um, we do one more thing after that. Um, what should these exponents add up to? Four, right? So four <laughs> plus zero is four, so I probably have that one right. Three plus one. So if you are doing them like a single at a time, you can do that because it works. 
but if you want to do them all at the same time, you're going to go, if this one's a 3, the other term must have to be 1 because they have to add up to that exponent 4. Notice how these are 2 and 2, they add up to 4. 1 plus 3 is 4, and at the end, 0 plus 4 is 4. So the second one kind of always falls into play just because they always add up to 4. Okay, so if you didn't get that, um, let me know and I can come and help you for a second. Okay, so find the third term of 3x minus 1 to the 5. Okay, so we're going to do the numbers just like we did before. So we're really going to look at the triangle and look at the sixth row. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, uh, what numbers are you looking at? We're looking for the fifth. So you'd go, yep, 1, 5, 10. So I'm going to write it. 1, 5, 10. 10, 5, 1. Now, we only want the third term, so what number goes with that? 10. Okay, so the third term says we need this one only. So my starting number is going to be a 10. Okay, then I need my A. What's my A this time? 3x. And my B is negative 1. So the first part of it is going to include my 3x. I don't have the exponent up there yet. My second part is going to include my negative 1, and I don't have the exponent there yet either. Now, this is where it becomes something like, if you know that the first one goes down, let's just count down. It starts with what? 5, 4, 3. So my exponent on that one is going to be a 3. Now, what are they supposed to add up to? 5. So what's the other one? 2. And then we simplify that term only. Okay, now you could count it, you could do whatever you need to do, but that's really the gist of, of how you find it. So we're going to take 10 times 3 cubed, which is 27, so that's 270. And would negative 1 squared be positive or negative? Positive. positive. So it's going to be 270 x to the 3. Yep, and I want to see that other part too. Oops, it just shut off on me. I don't know why. Let's get in, in there just for a second. So when you have one term, it's actually e a lot easier than doing all of them. Um, but remember that the two exponents that you're looking at, if you can get the first one, the other one just adds up to that exponent, whatever it happens to be. So since ours was a 5, the first exponent was a 2, the next one had to be a, or was a 3, the other one had to be a 2 because they add up to 5. And that's kind of it. So that's all you need to know from this section. Sometimes when they have variables in both of them, like an x and a y, they get a little trickier, but it works the same way. The only difference would be you would have a y with this one. So it would be negative 1 squared, and it would be y squared as well. So if, if there's two variables, don't make it harder. Just write down what you have, simplify, call it good.